Hello everyone, this is Drew Douglas in for ThemeForest.net and uh, today we're going to go over WordPress for Designers Day 5. And you'll remember in Day 4 that we went uh, over the basic WordPress loop and learned how to pull out uh, some of our basic posts from our WordPress database and, uh, and display it in just a real simple form. Uh, and today we're still not really worried about the design and the aesthetics of our theme. But we are going to uh, learn how to break up our files and, and again use some, some more template tags we haven't seen. And, uh, and we're going to actually break up our files into different theme files so we can start to add a lot more f uh, flexibility to our theme and, and some more progress with our theme. Um, I, I'm kind of battling a little bit of a cold right now so I'm going to try to remember to speak up and, and, uh, and as clearly as I can. But I just want to apologize if... Uh, if I'm not uh, as enthusiastic or uh, or my or my uh, voice isn't as loud as usual, so that said, let's uh, let's go ahead and open up Firefox as always, and <sighs> gotta leave this video for a second, and um, we'll go to our local host. Uh, you should be familiar with the address by now. It's localhost colon eight 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 WordPress, and uh, need to go ahead and activate our old theme real quick. This is our our test theme I I was doing earlier today. So I will go down to themes and activate our theme we were working with earlier. Okay, so this is what we left off with last time. Um, you know, pretty basic, but we used the loop to pull out these three posts. Um, we styled the, you know, if you call that style, we styled the posts a little bit. Um, added some real basic footer uh, template tags to display our footer, and of course our uh, blog title and our description. So what we're going to go to, uh, what we're going to do today is is we're going to split a lot of these uh, a lot of our page up into different files so we're going to we're going to split uh, our title and our description and, and any of our heading information into a header file and and our main content will uh, stay in index for now and um, and we're going to add a sidebar so we're going to get into some pretty cool stuff today so let's go ahead and open up coda or whatever your uh, text editor of choice uh, happens to be and you'll see that we're you know we're working locally and I have our our WordPress forest uh, theme folder open and ready. So so far in your theme folder you should have index.php, screenshot.jpg, and uh, style.css. So we will open up index.php and you know we all, all we have is basic uh, information in here but if we keep going and putting all of our PHP and all of our file information into just our index page it's going to get pretty large and we can really organize this better in, you know, the, the correct way using uh, theme template files that, that we discussed early on in this series. So the first thing we want to do is we want to just be able to display all of our header information right here, um, all, all of our basic heading information in a separate file so we can easily edit it. Well, the first thing we're going to want to do is create a new file. So I can just right click and create a new file, header php okay let's open up our header.php now all we really have to do here is copy what information we already have for our header and go ahead and insert it into our header PHP file instead so we will take take from end header all the way up um, we will copy that we'll go back over to header.php and we will paste it We'll save that, and we're going to get rid of all of that from our index file. Okay, so now we have all of our information in our header.php file, but we need to be able to tell uh, WordPress to to grab that uh, header file before it does anything else with this content. So how do we do that? Well, it's actually really simple, and we'll just type PHP get header and that does exactly what you think it will do it uh, grabs our header.php file and inserts it into our index page so 
all of our uh, information here, you know, our doc type and our title tags and any logo, um, any logo and uh, info, stuff like that, um, will be grabbed and inserted into our index page now. So let's see uh, if that worked. We'll, we'll refresh. And okay, nothing has changed. Um, you might have seen that the CSS changed a little bit, and I, I, uh, I edited the CSS just a little bit to get rid of those corners we had. But, but nothing here uh, base is, is changed. We, our header is still showing up um, just as we would expect it to, but now it's in a separate file. And again, the, the page looks a little bit different because I, uh, I edited a little bit of the CSS, but like I mentioned, we're not going to worry about the CSS. I, I just wanted to make room for the sidebar. So using get header, we can include our header.php file. Now what some blogs include in their header would be your page navigation. And you know, we even though we're not really worried about the aesthetics of our theme yet, it would be nice if we could, you know, at least list our, our pages in kind of a uh, a horizontal navigation type um, way here at the top before any of our posts. So how do we display uh, and link to our different pages in WordPress? Well, WordPress makes it pretty easy for us to do so. In our header.php file, under our um, div class of tagline, we're going to want to display our navigation. So first, we'll do an unordered list with an ID of nav. Okay, since that's done, now we're going to type in PHP WP for WordPress list pages and notice the underscores in between each word of course it's a custom WordPress function and we'll just close our PHP tag like so and we'll, we'll go ahead and save that and take a look at that okay well it's kinda doing what we want um, but you know this doesn't pages there's no real need for that to be there how do, how do we get rid of this how, how do we how do we just display uh, the links how we would like them uh, to show up which is just you know horizontally across this page well you'll remember th uh, when we went over WordPress template tags that most uh, WordPress template tags can take different arguments so whenever we have a question about uh, you know a, a a function or a template tag in WordPress, it's a good idea just to check out, check out the codex. I just type in codex WordPress and uh, you know WP list pages. Let's see what it brings up. Okay, I've obviously been here before. And we can go here and we can see examples and default usage with all kinds of different arguments that we can give it. So if we scroll down a little bit, we can see one of the first examples is, is showing us how to just display our our, uh, our navigation with with no heading with without the title that says pages in it and we use that using the title list so if we scroll up you know we can we can see that that's one of the options so what we're going to do is go back to coda and in between WP list pages we'll do some quotations and we'll title li oops, underscore li equals and we will just leave it blank and we'll save that And there we go. We can, you know, very ugly navigation, um, but it works, and it's doing what we're what we want it to do. And if you're wondering about these separate pages, I uh, I obviously went in and added some, but you know now would probably be a good time just in case for those who haven't ever worked with WordPress before how to you know how to add a page quickly. So if you wanted to add some pages to fill in to be able to display, you would just click on the pages here on the sidebar in the WordPress admin panel click add new and and you could add you know any page, your page title here and uh, any static page uh, and information in HTML that you wanted so if I go to edit you'll see that I have you know one two three four pages um, already set up and that was just so we could display our navigation so if you want to go ahead and set up some uh, pages you can go ahead and do that Okay, so now we learned how to split our header file into a completely separate file in our theme and how to, in our index page, call our header. And that's pretty cool because we're going to use that technique um, for almost, you know, for every single uh, theme file we do from now on. 
So we're learning how to split things up and, to, and how to organize them uh, to allow more flexibility. One other thing I want to note before moving on is whenever you get some time, um, if we go to the back to WordPress admin panel here, you notice that WordPress 2.7.1 has been released and you can uh, click please update now and you should be able to update just automatically um, I believe. But for now we'll just we'll just skip that and carry on with the screencast. Okay, um, our our uh, post, our blog is starting to kind of come together, but we're we're obviously missing a sidebar, and and we could have some more information displayed here, like like our archives. And notice I said that properly today for any of you that caught me on the archives last time. But we could display our our archives or our categories or even you know our pages or links and whatever information we wanted. So now let's let's move on and let's make a sidebar. And it's actually not as, as tricky as we would think. It's kind of the same process as last time. Except this time we don't have any content to copy and paste. We're just going to uh, create our sidebar from scratch. Um, like we've been doing this whole time. So we'll stay on our index.php, but we'll create a new file. Call it sidebar.php. We'll go ahead and open up sidebar.php. Okay. The first thing we want to do is probably just go ahead and give it a div ID of you know sidebar, whatever you want to name it, but give it div ID of sidebar and just a basic unordered list as as WordPress is pretty much handles everything in an unordered list very well as um, you've probably noticed that a lot of things are are output in list format so we can uh, we can nest lists and uh, do a lot of cool stuff. Anyway, we'll set up a basic unordered list, and now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to widgetize our sidebar. We're going to get it ready for any widgets um, that the theme may have. And you've probably heard this um, when dealing with WordPress before, but uh, we're not going to really worry about widgets too much today, or, or, or how to use them. But we're going to worry more about getting our sidebar set up for them. Um, we'll cover them more in depth a little bit later in the screencast, but. Widgets are basically um, are different packages um, that people can activate, and you'll see we have no sidebars defined if you click on widgets. But widgets would allow somebody just to come in here and click uh, and and add their calendar and add a uh, you know their archives or their categories um, through a user interface instead of having to get into any of the code and add or remove code from the theme files. So it's really easy just to to get our theme set up for that. So let's let's go ahead and start off with PHP. You know, just give ourselves a comment. So you know, let's wizardize up in here. Okay, and we'll close our PHP. Inside our PHP tags, we need a conditional uh, statement of if the function does not exist which is why there's an explanation mark before the function exists which tells PHP if the function does not exist oops sorry about that if the function dynamic sidebar does not exist and I got this all messed up now okay there we go if the function uh, dy dynamic sidebar does not exist or if dynamic sidebar is not present close our if statement and we'll give it a colon and, and and what we're saying here is if if the function dynamic sidebar which is a widget if if the theme uh, has any widgets um, in the sidebar if there's no if that function doesn't exist then go ahead and display the data below so basically if they haven't activated any of their widgets we need to have some code in between these PHP tags to display and we will end our if statement there so if there are no widgets what will we display here well one thing that would be pretty helpful um, in our sidebar would be a search form and we're lucky um, that that uh, WordPress already kind of handles our search for us it, 
it's not the greatest search in the world, but it definitely works, and um, you can always incorporate a Google search into it later. But, but let's go ahead and worry about how do we get a search form to show up in our sidebar. Now that we have our, our widgetized sidebar um, semi-ready. So well, first we'll add a list, since we're, in we're inside an unordered list. And again, we're going to use some PHP. And then we will say PHP get search form. Simple as that. We'll go ahead and save that. And we'll navigate back to our theme. Um, oh, and obviously it's not showing up yet because we haven't told um, our index.php file to grab the sidebar. So obviously we need to do that. And so we'll do php get sidebar. And now we'll save that. So now we have our sidebar file and on our index we're calling the sidebar. So let's see what we got. Refresh. And you can see our, our search for and our basic default search form is showing up. And good enough for now. And, that, and, that, and we got that to show up with, you know, with one line of PHP in the list. So um, it's pretty cool how WordPress can handle our search form for us like that with one line. So now that we have our search form, what are a few other things while we're on the sidebar that we could uh, display and, and how, how do we display them? Well. You know, if we wanted to, we could list our pages again. You know, is is kind of a, a user-friendly navigation sidebar in, in case they somehow missed our our pages up top. But you know, we could PHP. You should re you should remember from from doing this just a second ago how we list our pages. WP list pages. But this time, let's let's give it the title, list or argument. But let's give it some H3 tags, you know, and call it pages so they know what they're looking at. And we'll save that. Okay, and you can see our pages have showed up, and uh, WordPress automatically formats an unordered list uh, when listing our pages like so, which is why I didn't wrap it in, a, in another unordered list or any list tags. So uh, that would be our pages. How about... Let's uh, let's move on. Let's do uh, let's do the word I can't pronounce. <laughs> let's do archives. I don't I don't care. I like archives better. I I've, I've always said it that way. I know it's wrong, but I like the archives. Okay, and uh, you'll notice the list tag since we're already inside a unit list, and we'll nest another unit list here for our archives. And it's simply a matter of just another PHP function. We'll do PHP. And then we will do WP for WordPress, get archives. Now, if, if we don't pass it in any parameters, we'll, we'll go ahead and see what that does. We'll refresh. OK. So it's going to go ahead and show all, all of our archives, uh, I believe, by default. So let's, let's give it a parameter, and let's say type of, of monthly, which will just give us a monthly um, list of our archives uh, w you know, once time passes so we don't have, have all kinds of them showing up. So getting the archives to show up is just a matter of, uh, you know, giving a, some h3 tags in the sidebar, an unordered list, and then inside that unordered list a PHP statement of WP get archives. <laughs> and uh, if we we inspect it here with Firebug, we'll see that uh, WordPress automatically has wrapped any archives we have into uh, list tags for us. I, I think we have time for yeah, let's let's do one more. Let's keep going with our sidebar here. We're we're feeling sassy, aren't we? Let's do some PHP and this time let's list our categories. That's a good one to list to give people a chance to navigate through the different categories that we'll be setting up later um, for our posts. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and list our categories. So WP list 
categories will be our function. And inside of that, we'll go ahead and um, we'll, we'll just leave it like that. We won't pass it any arguments yet. Okay, and you can see categories is uh, uncategorized. Let's let's pretty that up a little bit and give it the title list, you know, of uh, you know H three categories. Save that and refresh. Okay, and that's you know at least it matches the rest of our sidebar for now. Now uncategorized is our only category right now, so let's let's go ahead and change that. You should already have some default posts set up. And maybe you know you were smarter than me, and you already added some categories for each post. But go into edit post, and you know when we heard the news about patty mayonnaise, we'll edit this one to to a new category. We'll uncheck uncategorized, and we'll click add new category. And uh, you know breaking news. We'll be we'll go ahead and add. We'll add this post now under breaking news and update post. And just so we have, you know, a couple more showing up, let's let's edit my new AOL tattoo, uh, which is awesome, by the way. And we'll get that off of uncategorized, and um, you know, the category of too much info, and we'll add it to the category of too much information. Okay, so we go back. Okay, now we have some, you know, some categories we can explore. So let's go over uh, a couple of things we learned today. Uh, we learned that we can split up our theme files as we looked at in the beginning of the series, and we can split them up to organize our theme and and, and uh, allow more flexibility. And then in our index page, which is the really uh, the only main file we're working with so far, we'll you know we can call get header get sidebar and uh, and we can start to see how we can pull in these different pages con uh, you know the content from these different files and include them in whatever pages we want and if you've ever uh, you know if you're a PHP person um, the these the get sidebar and get header functions are a lot like PHP includes so if you've ever you know worked with PHP includes or you're checking out Jeff's awesome uh, diving into PHP series that's going on right now as well that might look uh, or seem a little bit like a familiar topic. So I think that's where we're going to stop today. Uh, oh, there's one more thing uh, I want to go over. Uh, hopefully I don't, don't go too far over time here, but um, I'm sure some of you have been curious to see what happens when we actually click on a post because that's no longer our index.php page. Well, you'll see it still works and that is what we'll talk about in, a, in just a little bit and coming up in the series is is how does it know what theme file to, you know to format to use to format this individual uh, post an article for us and and that's known as the WordPress template hierarchy so right now you should be able to tell that it's just it's defaulting to the index.php type layout um, and structure because we don't have uh, you know a uh, a single um, page yet for our for our you know individual article setup, but I just wanted to point that out in case you guys were wondering you know what happens if I if I click on one of these posts since all we have is an index.php page you know how does it know how to format this? Well, that that's known as the WordPress template hierarchy, and and just know that it's it's defaulting right now to our index page, and we are going to cover that very shortly. So um, if you're looking for some extra homework tonight, you can try to. Uh, get the footer in a separate file by itself and get it showing up and we will pick up where we left off on day six and continue our WordPress for designers um, if you guys are enjoying this as always uh, I really urge you to subscribe to the RSS feed to stay up to date that would help us out uh, immensely and uh, I will see you next time have a great day